So fractions, day four, we'll talk about uh, reducing fractions, introduction to improper fractions, and then mixed numbers. Okay, first we're going to go ahead and talk about what a greatest common factor is. The greatest common factor is basically the greatest factor that divides two numbers, right? So if I look at, you know, 12 and say 16, what you have to understand is a factor, right? When we multiply two numbers, right, say two and three, each of these are their own factors. So two is a factor and three is a factor. So the numbers we're multiplying together are called factors. So when I look at 12 and 16, when we're trying to basically find the greatest common factor between these, right, if I write all of the numbers that multiply to give me 12, so I have 2 and 6, right, I have 1 and 12, I have 3 and 4, right, these pairs of numbers multiply to give you 12. Now if I write the factors of 16, I have 1 and 16, I have 2 and 8, um, and then I have 4 and 4. So now if I were to make a list of the potential factors, right, I would have 1, 2, right, um, 3, 4, and then 6 and 12. Those are your potential factors of 12. Right now, 16 would have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, which is the greatest one from this list, right, that goes into 12 and 16, and it is 4. So the greatest common factor between 12 and 16 would be 4. So we say the GCF is 4. Now, you're pretty good with your multiplication tables. So you can just say, what's the largest number that goes into 12 and 16? And you would say 4. Okay? So now, what do we need to use this for? Well, we use the greatest common factor to help us reduce fractions. So, how do we reduce a fraction? We find the greatest common factor between the numerator and denominator. Then, we divide the numerator and denominator by the GCF. Okay? So remember, your numerator is the number in top. Your denominator is the number on bottom. So now, as we look at some examples below. So, right down here, I look at 4 and 16. Right? If we had to break down, right, all the GCF of 4, in the GCF of 16, right? Well, what are the factors of 4? Does 1 go into 4? Yes. Does 2? Yes. Does 3? No. But does 4? Yes. So these are your factors of 4. 16, you have 1 goes into it, 2 goes into it, 3 no, 4 yes, 5 no, 6 no, 7 no, 8 no, or sorry, 8 yes, and then 16. So what's the greatest common factor between 4 and 16? Well, the biggest number in both lists is 4. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 4, the denominator by 4. Now, what is 4 divided by 4? 1. What is 16 divided by 4? That is 4. So now, if I look at 8 and 24, right, what's the largest number that goes into these? Right, the largest number that goes into 8 and 24 would be 8. Right, so 8 divided by 8 will give me 1. When I do 24 divided by 8, that would give me 3. Now, what happens if you said, right, that 2 was? If I divide the numerator by 2 and I divide the denominator by 2, that would give me 4 over, uh, what is that, 12. Well, I have to recognize that 4 and 12 can both be divided by another number because we always want to reduce to the lowest terms. So 4 divided by 4 would be 1. 12 divided by 4 would be 3. You get the same answer either way. Okay? So even if you don't find the greatest common factor, you may just have to reduce more than once. 
So 5 and 25, what's the largest number that goes into 5 and 25? That number would be 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Okay. Couple more examples. So 12 and 16, right? Again, if I write the factors of 12, 1 goes into it, 2 goes into it, 3, 4, 12. Factors of 16, right? 1 goes into it, 2 goes into it, 4 goes into it, 8 goes into it, 16. So 4 is a common factor. So divide the numerator by 4, the denominator by 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So if we go to reduce 6 eighths, right? 2 goes into 6 and 8. So I'm going to divide 6 by 2. 8 by 2. That would give you 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now, number 6 is a tough one. When I have 24 over 36, now, if you know your multiplication tables real well, it's easy to do. Now, you might think, right, if I, if I go to do this, what's the largest number that goes into uh, 24 and 36? Now, if you know them real well, that would be 12. So I could divide numerator and denominator by... 12. And if I do that, 24 divided by 12 is 2. 36 divided by 12 is 3. But say you don't recognize that right away. So say you make the mistake and you say 6, right? You divide the numerator by 6, denominator by 6. That would give you 4 over 6. Well, I have to recognize that 4 and 6 can still be divided by 2, and that would give me 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay? So, I want you to pause the video and try the next four problems on your own, and then come back and check your answer. So, in the next group of problems, right, the U tries, 5 divided by 5, would give you 1 over 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6 over 18, both could be divided by 6. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. 18 divided by 6 is 3. The next one, 24 and 30, both of these can be divided by 6. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. 30 divided by 6 is 5. So it would be 4 fifths. Then 45 over uh, 90 or 54. Both of these can be divided by 9. 45 divided by 9 is 5. 54 divided by 9 is 6. Okay? Now, Introduction to mixed numbers. A mixed number is a number consisting of a whole number and a proper fraction. So when I look at it, we would see something like 5 and then 2 thirds, where this 5 represents your whole number and 2 thirds is your proper fraction. Okay? Now, what you have to understand is a whole number is how many holes you have. So if you think of it as money, right, your dollars would be your whole amounts. Your change would be your proper fraction. So when we look at the first example here, here we have this represents one hole. This represents another hole. So how many holes do I have here? Two full, right? But then I have a partial. How many? pieces is this pie broken up into? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we would say that this fraction, this is not a whole, right? But we do have six out of seven. So right here, this diagram says we have two holes, 
and six sevenths of another hole. Okay. Example two, I have one hole here. Then the partial I have, I have three out of four in the next part. Okay. So then the next one, how many holes do I have here? I have one hole. And then here, how many parts is this hole broken up into? So we have one, two, three. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen. And then out of the sixteen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have one and nine sixteenths right here. So a mixed number has a certain number of holes, and then 9 out of 16 partials. So now what's an improper fraction? A fraction in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. So when I look at this, this would be like 15 over 4. Another example would be, you know, 10 over 3. Anytime your numerator is greater than your denominator, that is an improper fraction. This actually happens when, right, the fraction can consist of a certain number of holes, right? Such as if I look here, these three pies are broken up into seven pieces each. So if I look, how many pieces do I have all together? Well, each is broken up into seven pieces. How many pieces do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I have 20, right, out of seven, or 20 sevenths of a piece, right? So the next one, if you look, these pies are broken up into fourths, right? So if I look, this is equivalent to fourth, one fourth. Well, how many fourths do I have here? I have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, five, or sorry, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, right? That's what I have there. And then over here, I have 16, um, each piece here represents one sixteenth. I have 16 of them here. I have nine of them here to give me 25 sixteenths. Okay, so this is an improper fraction. Well, what does it really mean, right? So if you look at the diagrams here and here for the mixed number and the improper fraction, what you notice is they're the same. But we can represent these diagrams as a mixed number or an improper fraction. Well, a lot of times there's advantages to using the improper fraction versus the mixed number. And then other times there's an advantage using the mixed number versus the improper fraction. It's very important to be able to convert from one to another. So we're first going to talk about if we have an improper fraction, how do we convert that to a mixed number? Well, here's how we do it. Goes back to divisions and re division with remainders. So if I have a numerator over a denominator, whenever I convert an improper fraction to a mixed number, I'm basically going to take the numerator and I'm going to divide it by the denominator. And when you ever you divide, you would get a quotient up top and then plus a remainder. Well, once we divide, what we're going to do is we're going to take the quotient is our whole number. So your quotient as your whole number, and then you're going to put your remainder over your denominator. So if we think over here, 
when we take 20 over 7. 20 is my numerator, 7 is my denominator. How many times, what's the maximum number of times 7 can go into 20? 7 go into 20 two whole times, right? But when I do 2 times 7, I get 14. What's 20 minus 14? 6. Can 7 go into 6 or do I have anything to bring down? No. So what we say is 6 is our remainder. So this would end up being our quotient is 2 and 6 out of 7 left over. If you look, isn't that the mixed number you got for the diagram? So right here, if I look, isn't this what we get here? Yep. So let's talk down below. If I look over here, right, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This here represents 11, and each of these are broken up into thirds, right? So I have 11 thirds is an improper fraction here. Now, if I want to convert that to a mixed number, I have one hole here, two holes, three holes. It would be three. And how many parts do I have left over? Three and two thirds. Right? So if I take 11 and three, right, my numerator divided by my denominator, three goes in 11 three whole times. Three times three is nine. 11 minus nine is two. This is my remainder. So don't we put the quotient as our whole number? Our remainder is our number of parts. So it would be 3 and 2 thirds. So down below, 14 sevenths. But what is, how many times does 7 go into 14? Two whole times. Will I have a remainder here? No. Okay. So the next one. 26, well, 6 goes into 20 three whole times. 3 times 6 is 18. I'm going to go and subtract. 20 minus 18 is 2. So this would be three holes and then 2 out of 6. But whenever I do this, can 2, 6 be reduced? Yes. What well, can 2 and 6 both be divided by? It could be divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it would be 3 and 1 third. Next one, 15 eighths. 8 goes into 15 one whole time. 1 time 8 is 8. When I subtract, I get 7. Can 8 go into 7? No. So this would be one whole and seven out of eight. Do me a favor, go ahead and pause the video and do the U tries. Okay, so five goes into 12, right? Uh, what is that, two times? Two times five is 10. When I subtract, I get two. So this would be two and two over five. Okay, 30 divided by 4. 4 goes into 37 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract and you get 2 fourths. So this would be 7 and 2 fourths. But you got to remember, 2 and 4 can be divided by 2. So it would be 7 and 1 half. Now, converting a mixed number to an improper fraction. So say I had um, a mixed number which is a whole number, then, oh, then a numerator over a denominator. Well, what I'm going to do is multiply the whole number and the denominator, right? Then I'm going to add the numerator and then divide that by the denominator. So over here, if I look, 
I have one hole here, and then I have one out of how many pieces is the hole broken up into? One, two, three, four. So one and one fourth. If I wanted to write this as an improper fraction, you should know you have one, two, three, four, five fourths. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply the four and the one, and I'm going to add my numerator of one and put that over four. But what's four times one? Four, four plus one is five, and that would give you five fourths. Well, Let's look down below here, make it a little easier. So here, I'm going to do 5 times 3, my denominator, times my whole number. Then I'm going to add my numerator. And I'm going to put that all over my denominator of 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19 over 5. Okay, so the next one, what is 3 times 12? That is 36, right? So 36 plus 2, my numerator, all over 3 gives me 38 over 3. Okay, the next one, my denominator 2 times my whole number 8 is 16. I'm going to add my numerator, which gives me 17 over 2. Do the U tries, come back, and check your answers. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 3 is 31 over 4. Then 5 times 9 is 45, plus 3. 45 plus 3 gives you 48 over 5. All right, go ahead and do this uh, homework assignment, and we'll talk about it later on if you have any questions.